Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about this. This is the Tascam DR22WL. It's a new portable recorder from Tascam that has some interesting features that sets it apart from its competitors. And its number one competitor is the Zoom H1. This has been a staple in the low budget filmmakers um, gear set basically for a long while. It's an inexpensive, lightweight, small portable recorder that has fairly good uh, audio quality. Now, what is gonna get you to upgrade from your Zoom H1 or decide to go for this Tascam instead of the Zoom H1. Now this is a little bit more money, but it also has a lot more features which we're gonna go into. So I do wanna say that I'm gonna have a side-by-side -side kind of comparison versus against these two. So if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. Go check my channel for that video. That will be up after this one. But for this video, I'm just gonna focus on the review. So definitely go ahead and check out the other video as well. It's gonna have sample footage more so than this one. So let's start off and look at the exterior of the device. To start off, I was very impressed with the build quality of this device. Now it is mostly or completely out of plastic, but it just feels very solid. All the button presses feel very nice. Um, all the dials feel very, very nice as well. It just clicks nice. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Now, when I first saw the photos, I thought this part was aluminum. It's not, it's plastic. And these little covers may or may not be uh, metal or you know they're probably plastic too but that just speaks for the quality of the plastic used it's definitely uh, above what other recorders are made of feels very solid now just to go over the button layout we have your menu buttons here you have your record stop play uh, forward backwards you have your Wi-Fi button you have a little knob down here now this adjusts your gain basically and it spins completely through so it's an electronic connection here you have your headphone out jack you have uh, your volume for your headphones you have an on button the power button the hold button right there here we have a microphone input you have a micro SD card slot which supports up to 128 gigabytes so that's a lot of storage you can have and you have a micro USB uh, connection which will do your data if you want to transfer or which you can use for power. So you can actually get one of these power bricks, connect it, and you don't even have to have the batteries in there, or you can use it as, as a backup solution. If you wanna record for a long time without worrying about your batteries dying, that's a great option to have, especially when you can throw in such a large card. So uh, on the back, of course, we have the two AA batteries right there, and you have your kind of a standard quarter inch mount. So that's basically the outside, other than this little spin wheel. Now basically here, you have your manual mode, which is kind of a standard. And then you have these other cool modes right here. So easy is completely audio. This guy right here is the little speaker is if you were like at a loud concert, it's gonna change the settings. It's still an auto, but it's gonna change them to suit that better. You have like an acoustic setting if you wanna record a single instrument setting. You have an interview setting if you wanna do like a voiceover or have multiple instruments over each other and you have playback options basically. So those are our options as far as a spin, di spin dial, that is what that's for. All right guys, so next let's look at the inside of this device. By the inside I mean the menus, the options, stuff like that. Now I do wanna say this device just came out and there's already a couple of firmware updates for it and I did go ahead and update it. Now you can just go to Tascam's website, find this on there, download the two files, uh, plug this into the USB and your computer, throw those over, just follow the guide on there, it's fairly easy to do. What that means is Tascam is trying to iron out the little bugs, there are a little bit of issues, and the same thing is gonna you know, basically happen with the apps, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But let's go ahead and go look into the menu system, and I'll show you guys some of the cool features of this device. So I went ahead and turned it on with the side button and we're gonna look at the menu. So here we have this little menu button and that's gonna bring up all sorts of different uh, menus inside uh, the task cam right here, you guys could see. This right here is a little tab button that just brings you throughout the different settings. So here you can adjust different formats, you can adjust um, a bunch of different settings like that. So I'm gonna go over some quick ones. So in formats, you can um, go up hit the enter button and you have your wave you have your different mp3s and you also have the bm or bwf which is like a wave format but has time code and uh, metadata in there so that is really awesome to have 
I'm gonna hit the mp3 right there. So below you have your sample rate. Uh, this is a cool feature, mono. You can either do mono or stereo. So you can select what type of microphone you're inputting, which is very nice. So if you're using a mono mic, you don't have to adjust that in post. That definitely is something that's really nice to have. You have your pre-record, you have your auto functions, dual format if you wanna record wave and mp3 at one time you and your p code so i'm going to tab over here you can do uh you can have an auto divide you can add some reverb uh let's move over so setup here you can uh, adjust your backlight contrast wi-fi power save power savings basically format your card you have all those options and here you can going to be able to see your uh, more information what version you're using so those are basically a quick overview of the different settings that you have here it's very very nice setup very easy to use i really like the interface so if we go home here and we hit this button here you have like your folders basically and this is showing what's on the device already so here we have um you know different recordings that i've done and if i wanted to i can just move over let me go back here there we go uh, are you sure you want to make a new folder? Yes, there you go. So you can make a new folder and record in the actual for folder if you want to organize your recordings right inside of the, the device. So that's very nice to have as well. So once you hit record, nothing happens as you guys see right here. Now this is a standard task cam type thing. You have your record button flashing. Yeah, you can see what your levels are. You can adjust some stuff and you can hit your record button. Then after you actually hit the record twice, as you see here, now we are getting somewhere. We are recording uh, some audio right there. And if you guys want to stop, you actually have to hit the stop button. If you guys hit record again, the, what it does is it pauses it. So you can, um, you know, basically pause recording and you can restart again. So if you need that kind of feature, that's nice to have. And you hit the stop button. There we go. We finished off the track. So let's talk about adjusting your gain. Now you guys see up here, uh, you were seeing negative 27. Basically it's showing you uh, what your decibel settings are at. So if you wanna adjust your gain, we have the knob down here. So let me show you what that does. So here you see we're at 50, we're basically halfway. And this goes from zero all the way to 90 actually. So if you guys see me spinning this thing, it actually does take quite a bit to adjust it. But one of the interesting things is it's not just telling you your kind of rating from zero to 90. If I'm going backwards now, it's actually telling me, okay, here I am at 75, but I went down seven or eight decibels. So it's kind of cool being able to see how much decibels you dropped it and uh, what the actual kind of number it is. So that's definitely nice to have. All right, guys, so right now I'm doing a test of the audio quality of just basic speaking like a video like this. So right now you're hearing the Zoom H1 with the lav mic plugged in, just like my regular videos. Right now I'm switching over to the GH4, just like you'd have if you're just not using an audio microphone recorder type setup, if you're just using whatever internal audio you get from your camera. And right now I'm switching over to the Tascam DR22WL. Now I'm not using a lav in here, it's just me holding the recorder in the automatic mode for interview. Right now I'll switch back to the Zoom H1 and this is what I normally sound like. This is what your sound would be like if you don't do anything and you're using a Lumix, uh, Panasonic Lumix GH4 basically. And here is once again the DR22WL. Now I'm gonna have a more in-depth uh, testing comparing this recorder to the Zoom H1 like I mentioned before. Definitely check that video out because that's gonna make a little bit more sense comparing uh, two recorders to each other with the, the same labs plugged in, different music, different sounds, stuff like that's gonna be more in detail. So definitely check that video out. Okay guys, so this is what you've been waiting for. Let's take a look at the Wi-Fi setup. Now you do have to go into your app store and download uh, the DR app, basically the Tascam DR app. If you guys put that in, you'll find it. And go ahead and download that and then I'll show you guys how to connect it and a few kind of little quirks and stuff that's not ironed out yet, but hopefully will be in the short future. All right guys, so let's talk about the big feature of this uh, device, that's the Wi-Fi. So it's very easy to turn on. You just hit the little Wi-Fi button, connect now, yes. Now it's gonna bring up the information, the password, the Wi-Fi login information. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Wi-Fi on my device and I should find it because I have it pre-set up. So let's see if it will log in there for me. And I think it did. So I have the DR Control app, which is what the app that you download. 
And there we go, we're logged in. So as easy as that, now, I do wanna point out that the Android app is not as capable as the iOS app, at least for now. The iOS app has a lot more options, which I will show you. Basically on the Android, you see the battery life, you see your, uh, basically your readout right there. You have some information about what you're recording, a play and a record button. So I hit the record button. There we go. So, and now I could see the readout, I'm recording, and I could stop it and pause it basically. And then you have your little volume control, I, I suppose, right there. So that's basically what you get. You can pause it, you can hit record again, and let's check kind of the delay there. So maybe a quarter second delay, maybe a half a second delay. It's not horrible, but of course, uh, with the Wi-Fi, there is a delay. So let's show you what the iOS app gets. So here's our iOS equivalent. So you see it already looks much cooler than the version that we saw on the Android. So here you go, we have your battery life, you have different markings as far as your readout, you have more information here, you have a play, record, you have a mark button if you wanna mark parts of the video, you have an input button right here for your limiters peak, your low cut, your basically what your gain setting is at, you have a menu where you can change all your record settings, and it works really, really nice and fluid. MP3 right there, change your sample rate. There you go, pre-record is on. So uh, you have a firmware update that you can do through here as well. And I've still had a couple different glitches on the iOS version, but basically it's a lot nicer than what you get on Android. So I'm gonna hit record. There you go, it was nice and fast. Let's check the delay on this one. So it glitched up there for a second. It's being a little bit glitchy. In my previous testing, it was very nice, possibly even better than the Android equivalent. But once again, this just came out. It's the first release of the app and the firmware, which are still um, updating. So I'm guessing it's gonna get more efficient, but we can hit uh, record, pause. We can hit stop here, hit record. Um, there you go guys, you can mark different stuff. So anyways, that's what it's kind of looking like so far. Um, it's not perfect, so don't be thinking you're gonna get this device and um, you're gonna be able to go out and use it and you know use all the Wi-Fi features very well. Uh, if, if you're watching this video, you know, maybe a couple weeks after this device came out, you're probably not gonna have any issues. Now, one thing that you should be able to do that you can't yet is hook up the little ear, basically your ear pods, your earbuds, headphones, whatever, and actually listen to the audio that's being recorded live. I mean, it still says there's a slight delay, which could be that quarter, half a second delay, so you can't plug that into your recording, your camera, and kind of sync it that way, but you could still monitor wirelessly what your recorder is doing, which is awesome. And of course, you can see all your readouts, your gain settings, your uh, decibel, stuff like that. So the Wi-Fi setting is definitely a big feature. Um, I'm glad it has it. We're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer for them to fix the app. And I will keep you guys kind of posted and I'll just, you know, you guys can check the description um, if you're interested while you're watching this video. And I'll let you guys know if it's been fixed or if it has not. So it's very easy to shut off the Wi-Fi. Just one little button. There we go, the Wi-Fi is turned off. All right guys, so let's just talk about some downsides. There's really almost no downsides. Now, one of them I'm gonna go into when I'm gonna do the comparison with this, but basically I was hoping that it would be a little bit smaller than it actually is. Now, Zoom's always been pretty small, and I wish there was something even smaller, uh, but this is larger than the Zoom H1. Um, you guys will see that in another video, of course. Um, so that's size, I mean, that's really only a downside if you're trying to fit this into, let's say, your pocket, or or say at a wedding, if you wanna put it into the groom's jacket pocket for recording like that, it is gonna be a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier. Um, but for all the other uses, I mean, it's very, very small. It's still compact, so it shouldn't be an issue. Now, the other downside that I was mentioning is um, still the little bit of uh, bugs that have to be wrinkled out uh, as far as the app, the Android app that still hasn't been updated. I mean, we're gonna give it a little bit of time and hopefully they're gonna get that fixed. Um, since they already have firmware updates available for it, I'm sure they're working hard on making sure that this product is gonna work well. Um, other than that, that's really the only downsides I could think of. I mean, of course you can put on stuff like we want phantom power, we want XLRs, blah, 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 but that's what you have the bigger version 
um, for the 44WL, basically. So um, that about wraps it up, guys. Hopefully that was um, informative to you guys. If you have any questions, definitely ask in the description, and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, if you guys like this video, if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful, definitely give me a thumbs up. That's going to help other people find this video and hopefully will kind of help them out with inf the information as well. Now, if you guys want to purchase one of these, I'm going to have some links in the description to a couple different places where you can buy them. Now, if you buy through the link, that actually gives me a small kickback to this channel and that supports the channel. I don't get anything shipped to me. I buy everything that I review, that I do tutorial videos on. I pay my own money to do all that stuff, and that's a lot of money, guys. I'm sure you guys see the different gear that I use. So that is definitely appreciated if you want to do that. So if you guys are able to do that, I would definitely appreciate it. And if you guys have some filmmaker friends that would be interested in advice like this, definitely share this video with them. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Definitely subscribe to the channel so you guys can see some more um, you know, tips, some gear reviews, you know, different stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.